Shalom, everybody, and welcome to Advanced Hebrew. This is week number seven, and you can find the notes for this class at theregathering.com forward slash page forward slash PFT Hebrew 3, or you can just get on your account at theregathering.com, click on the Pages tab, search for Advanced Hebrew, and it'll pop right up. As I said, this is week number seven. And, of course, previous classes can also be found on YouTube. Um, at the Passion for Truth video channel. All right, the topic of the day is numbers, or an introduction to numbers, rather. We're not going to cover every single aspect of numbers today, but I do want to give a brief intro so that you can count to 10. Um, That's a great thing to be able to do in any language you learn. It's a little more uh, involved in Hebrew than it is in a number of other languages, and uh, so I will show you some of that uh, involvement right now. There are two kinds of numbers. Uh, There are cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. Um, Cardinal numbers uh, are the first topic that we will cover, and those basically represent a quantity, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Okay, five ducks, four geese, um, you know, three kibbutzes, whatever the case may be. So, uh, cardinal numbers in Hebrew have two genders. Okay, they can be masculine or they can be feminine. And they have two ways they can function. Okay, so a cardinal function, a, a, the first uh, function I will introduce is numbers functioning as adjectives. Okay, so in the masculine, counting from 1 to 10, we have echad, shenayim, shalosh, arbang, chamesh, sheish, shevang, Shimona, Teshang, and Eser. Okay, so that is counting in the masculine, and there are also equivalents in feminine. Uh, I will show some of those. Um, well, I'll start with the number one. It's a little bit funny, so bear with me. The masculine form of the number one is Echad. So if we have a masculine noun, and we wish to say there is one, okay, so one horse, say, uh, we have to match our adjective, our number one, in uh, gender with our subject. So we would say sus echad, because echad is masculine, sus is a masculine noun. Sus echad. Uh, Actually, let's go with uh, one man, ish echad, okay, for parity. Uh, because when we say one woman, okay, woman is isha, and woman is feminine, so we need the feminine form of one, which happens to be achat. And these are listed in your notes. All of the cardinal numbers, the masculine and feminine forms, are listed in the notes in their adjective form. Okay, so isha achat would be one woman. Ish echad, isha achat. Okay, so that's how we use the number one in its adjective form. It must match gender. It already matches number because we can only use it with a singular object, right? All right, our number for two is shenayim in the masculine. Okay, so two men would be Anashim Shanayim. Two women would be Nashim. Remember, our irregular plural of Isha is Nashim. Nashim Shatayim. Anashim Shinayim, Nashim Shatayim. Okay, so Shatayim is the feminine form of the number two. Okay, so pretty straightforward so far. Uh, the, we can't help but match the number Okay, Shanayim is written in the dual form with this ayim, 
patach yod cherik mem ending. I'm not sure if I covered the dual form. Um, this is a specific form that means exactly two. Okay, im cherik yod mem, of course, is plural, means more than one. But if we want to say exactly two, we can, in fact, affix patach yod cherik mem, which looks a lot like the regular plural, but it's pronounced ayim instead of im. Okay, we can affix that to the end of a noun, and it means exactly two. All right, in the case of the number two, it in fact has that ending. Okay, so we can't help but match the ending uh, of, of Shanayim with, uh, with the ending of whatever noun um, we're modifying. Uh, rather, the number. We can't help but match the number because we're talking about the number itself. So one and two follow the regular rules of adjectives when they are used as adjectives affixed to nouns. When we get up to three, and all numbers above three, a, uh, a very strange thing happens, and that is that they still function as adjectives. They still follow the regular rules of adjectives. We no longer need to put a plural ending on our adjective because our adjective describes an exact number. So we'll have a plural ending on the noun, but not a plural ending on the adjective because shalosh means three. Okay, there's no need to add uh, im or ot to the end of that it already means three. It already means a plural. Okay, so three men. Uh, the interesting thing that happens is that the gender actually reverses. So one and two have to match the gender of the noun. Three and above have to not match the gender. In other words, if we say three men, we have to use the feminine form of three, which is shalosha. Okay, so we would say anashim shalosha, three men. For women, we would have to use the masculine form. So we would say nashim shalosh, three women. Okay, this is a strange thing to be sure. You'll notice in the notes that I've got a, a thicker line between uh, that separates two from three in our list of numbers. That's to remind you. All right, even though it's not written explicitly, but that is there to be a reminder that one and two have to match in gender. Three and above, okay, have to uh, match the opposite gender. Okay, they have to be opposite in gender of whatever noun you're modifying. So that is a funny little rule and something that can get you a little mixed up, but it is a rule. It is the way it's done. I'm not sure why, but whatever the case, that is, that is in fact how it's done. Um, another side note, in your list, you'll notice on shalosh, I've only got one dot. I combine the dot that denotes the sheen with the dot that indicates the cholam vowel. I did that because I didn't have enough room to write both. And uh, that's a convention that you will find in a number of books. When I'm writing things on the board, my preference is to include both dots so that there is absolutely no confusion. But if you... Um, if you note the absence of a vowel next to a letter and you note that there's a sheen or a scene next to it, that usually can't account for that absence. They're just combining the dot of the sheen with the cholam vowel. So this is pronounced shalosh, not shalsh. Okay, if it was shalsh, there would be a shva under here. Okay, so it is shalosh for three. And shalosh is uh, the masculine form, but it only modifies feminine nouns. Okay. And also, from here on out, um, one and two have specific feminine forms where a particular letter changes to a tav. From three on up, all we have to do to make the, uh, to make the number feminine is add comets hey to the end. Um, and a lot of times, there's also an accompanying vowel change somewhere earlier on in the word. I'm not so much concerned about that, but the general rule, we just add comets hey to the end of our number, and that makes it feminine, which means it can modify a masculine noun. All right? So it's a little, uh, a little strange, but that is how it is. Okay, so shalosh is three, arbang is four, and feminine arbaga. Same thing, if we were to say four men, we would have to say anashim arbaga. We would need to use the feminine form with the comets hey on the end to modify our masculine noun. All right, everything is, again, reversed once we get above two. And nashim arbang would be for women. Chamesh is five, and chamisha, 
is 5 feminine. Shesh is 6. Shi, uh, Shisha is 6 feminine. Shevang is 7, probably where we get the name of our number 7 from, Shevang. Okay. Shivaga, 7 feminine. Shimone is 8. Shimona, changing the uh, segel to a comets, is 8 in the feminine. So Shimone and Shimona. All right, masculine and feminine of eight. Taishang is nine. Tish, um, Tishang is nine feminine. And Eser, ten. Uh, Asara, ten feminine. Okay, so those are the numbers one through ten in their adjective uh, form, or their adjective, adj adjectival use. There's a big word for you. All right. There is another way. Okay, so, so when they're in this form, they, they follow the, the uh, noun they modify. And one and two match gender, three and above reverse gender, and otherwise they function just like a normal adjective. The other way to use them is to use them in the construct state. Okay, and both ways are equally legitimate, by the way. This way is one, and there's another way that's equally legitimate, which is to use the numbers in the construct state. Now, we've been talking about the construct state uh, throughout the uh, advanced courses, and I've uh, given little pieces here and there, but you'll remember that basically what the construct state is, is we take two words and we put them together, and the first word is said to be in the construct state. So when we translate this phrase, we can mentally insert the word of between the first word and the second word. All right, so if we were to say a uh, son of David, Okay, we would take the word son, which is Bain, the word David, David, all right, and the phrase ben, Bain David it, um, is now in the construct state. The way we know that um, is a, some, there are various things that happen to the word that is placed first. A lot of times a vowel change will occur, all right, a vowel shortening. So Bain David, just to give an example, just a little brief review on the construct state here. Bain David will usually have a vowel shortening, so this tzera will shorten to a segel. Tzera is a long vowel, long a, and segel is a short vowel. Okay, it's a short e, short e. Okay, so you'll see Ben David. All right, and that vowel shortening is our indicator that this phrase is in the construct state. Okay, so this means son of David, not just, okay, it indicates that there's a connection between those two words, that they're not just two, two words that happen to be adjacent to each other. There's a reason that they're being placed there. All right, so Ben David would be translated son of David. When we put numbers in the construct state, uh, the, same, the same idea applies. So if we were to say one horse in the construct state, what happens is, Echad, when it's put in the construct state, spelled exactly the same. This, by the way, is not on anything in the notes, but that's because there's a few general rules that you can uh, remember. Echad, the only thing that happens to it in the construct state is the long comets shortens to a patach. Comets is considered a long vowel in many cases, and the patach is considered a short vowel even though in Sephardic Hebrew they make the exact same sound. Okay. Um, but regardless, you'll see echad spelled like this when it is put in the construct state. Okay. So sus echad would be one horse. We could also say echad sus, okay. and we're saying one of horse. Now we would just translate this one horse just like we would sus echad. Okay, so sus echad is being used as an adjective. Echad is being used as an adjective. Echad sus, it's still essentially functioning as an adjective, but it's put in the construct state. It's more of an abstract noun uh, rather than a descriptive adjective. But this means exactly the same thing. Okay, and either one of these forms is equally legitimate. Okay, sus echad means one horse. Echad sus, literally one of horse, one of a horse but we would still translate this one horse, and the idea is still one horse, okay? But anyway, either one of these forms is, is legitimate. It's just a question of whether 
we're putting the number after the noun or before. If we put it before, we have to put the noun, or rather the number, into the construct state to indicate a construct relationship with the word that follows. All right, so with masculine, all the masculine numbers, um, this is pretty straightforward. Some of them don't change at all. Some of them have a small vowel shortening. Um, I don't want you to worry too much about those vowel changes. Okay, just understand that when you read texts, you will find different vowels than these when these uh, numbers are placed in the construct state. Okay. Uh, now, when we get above two, or rather, I'm going to focus on two, particularly um, something I forgot to do last time. Okay, so that's one. One is just a small vowel change. Two, if you'll recall, uh, when plural words are put into the construct state, they undergo uh, more significant changes than just vowels. So uh, now if it's a feminine plural, it makes no difference. Okay, it still stays in the feminine form. But a masculine plural word or a masculine dual word, when it's put in the construct state, will actually take on a new form that indicates it's plural. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if I were to say sons of David, okay, sons is banim. Okay, so that's sons. But if I want to say sons of, I have to use a new form. That new form retains the spelling. It drops the final mem. and puts a tzera where the chirik used to be. Okay, so, so sons is banim, sons of whatever comes next. Okay, when sons is put in the construct state, it becomes b'nei. Okay, so b'nei David would be sons of David. Uh, a common phrase in the Torah is b'nei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, All right? Or children, because... Uh, Sons being the masculine can refer to either gender. Okay, it can refer to a mixed group or it can refer to exclusively masculine. You know it's not referring to exclusively feminine. All right, but again, we default to the masculine, so that's why the translation children is usually preferred over sons. It's not saying only the sons necessarily. Um, it's referring to all the descendants of Israel. Okay, so B'nai David or B'nai uh, Yisrael would be sons of Israel. We do the same kind of transformation to Shanaim when it is put in the construct state. Okay, so two horses would be Susim Shanaim in the adjective form. Step off screen here for a moment so I can write this. Okay, Susim Shanaim. And if we put two in the construct state, we would say shenei susim. All right. So susim shenayim or shenei susim, either one means two horses. Adjective form, construct state. Okay. So it just follows the regular rules. These follow the regular rules of the construct state. Now the rest of these uh, masculine numbers simply undergo some kind of, some of them stay exactly the same, some of them undergo a minor vowel change. Um, so uh, don't worry too much about that, but just when you encounter it, you'll know, oh, okay, this number is being used in the construct state. Now, uh, of course, these masculine forms, though, even in the construct state, they still uh, we can use the ma we have to use the masculine forms to modify feminine nouns and the feminine forms to modify masculine nouns. Okay, the feminine forms from three on up, as I mentioned, are all made by adding the comets hey to the end. All right, and that is um, all right in the adjective form. This is the this is how it's made feminine. When these are put in the construct state, this hey changes to a tav. And depending on the number, we'll find either a um, either a patach or a segel 
in front of that top. I'm not going to go into every single one. All right. But Shaloshet, Arba'at, all right, in the construct state, and so on. And we'd have to use these forms for masculine nouns. All right, so if we were to say three horses, we could say Susim Shalosh, or I'm sorry, Susim Shalosha, because Sus is masculine. Okay, Susim Shalosha, three horses, or in the construct state. Shaloshet, Susim. Okay, either one means three horses. All right, but still in the construct state, we've got to use our feminine form to modify our masculine noun in numbers three and above. Okay, so this is a little more complicated than, uh, than Spanish. All right, but anyway, the others from four on up, all function the same way. Okay, so we've got to use the feminine forms to modify the masculine. Uh, the feminine adjective form it just simply takes the masculine form and adds the comments hey. And the feminine construct state uh, changes that hey to a tav and uses either a segel or a patach before that tav. Okay, so you'll see all that. Um, if you want to practice um, learning your numbers, learn them in the adjective form, okay? Because that's how you'll normally say them anyway. And if you know the adjective form and you know the rules about uh, the construct state, then you can reconstruct all the construct state forms. But anyway, that's the general the general rules behind doing that. Okay, so these are the cardinal numbers. These are numbers that represent quantity. 1 through 10, and um, they can be used as adjectives or they can be put in the construct state. Okay, So adjectives are put behind the noun that's modifying, behind, behind the noun that they're saying there's this many of you know, horses, men, women, whatever, whatever the case may be. Or in the construct state, the numbers are placed before the noun. Okay, So there's a lot of flexibility with the cardinal numbers. All right, we can use them in, in many ways. And this is just 1 through 10. It gets a little even more involved once we get above that, which is why I'm not going to get into that just now. This is just an introduction. It's nice to be able to count to 10. Um, and also, this will come in very handy in, um, <clears throat> in reading some of the scriptures that we're going to be translating later on. Okay, So those are the cardinal numbers. Now, the ordinal numbers, that's what's on your uh, other sheet. Ordinal numbers do not represent a quantity, but rather they represent a position. Okay, so instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the ordinal numbers are 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. Okay, and that can be, you know, place in line, you know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd day, 1st, 2nd, or 3rd place, uh, you know, uh, anything where there's a, a counted position, that's your function of your ordinal, ordinal numbers. So the first ordinal number is Rishon. Okay, Rishon. Rishon means first. Rishon comes from Rosh, which is Resh, Aleph, Sheen. Rosh is a head. Right? Rosh means head. So Rishon is the, the head ordinal number, the first one, and thus it means first. Um, you will, on rare occasion, also see Rishon spelled with a Yod instead of an Aleph. Okay, so Resh, Yod, Shin, Vav, final nun. All right, and it's still the same thing, still means first. It's just an alternate spelling. Um, this spelling is preferred. It shows the root. And... Um, and it's the most commonly used. All right, so Rishon means first. 
uh, the ordinal numbers also have to match in gender. And um, I did not include the, the feminine gender on that list because there's one thing that you can do to make any ordinal number feminine. It's different than the cardinal numbers. But to make any ordinal number feminine, add chirik, yod, tav to the end. So first masculine is rishon, first feminine is rishonit. Okay. Second masculine is sheni. All right, sheni. Not to be confused with shene. Right, shene would be uh, two in the construct state, but this is sheni, and it means second. Right, as in second place. Sheni. To make it feminine, shenit, cherik yod tav. Okay, so for any ordinal number, take its masculine form, add cherik yod tav to the end, and you've got its feminine form. Um, and actually, as we'll see later, really all you have to do is add a tav to the end to most of them, because most of them end in cherik yod already. Okay, so first, second. Okay, now how are these used? These are used differently than cardinal numbers. The ordinal numbers are much more consistent and much less flexible than the cardinal numbers are. All right, the ordinal numbers can only be used as adjectives. Okay, so they cannot be put in the construct state. They are used uh, exclusively as adjectives. So they're always placed behind the noun that they're modifying. And ordinal numbers uh, follow the regular rules of adjectives, which is no matter if it's first, second, third, fourth, or 156th, they match the noun they're modifying in number. Or rather, not in number. They have to match in number because they are a number. They match in gender. So masculine ordinal numbers go with masculine nouns. That it goes for first, for second, for third, for fourth, right on down the line. There's no differentiation between different numbers. Okay. So basically, ordinal numbers are just regular adjectives. All right? Cardinal numbers have special rules. But ordinal numbers are just regular adjectives, much easier to keep track of. OK? So this is first and second, <clears throat> Rishon and Shani. Stick with the masculine for now, because you can simply add that eat to the end and make it feminine. To construct the rest of the ordinal numbers, those can all be constructed, uh, and you've got a sheet that lists them, but if you, if you have your cardinal numbers memorized, you can reconstruct all of the ordinals from three on up by simply taking your cardinal number, take the last letter, and move it over. So stick a yod here. Take what was your last letter of your cardinal number here, and put another yod here. Chirik, chirik, and you've got shli, shi, which means third. All right, to make it feminine again, add your tav to the end, shli, sheet. So that's feminine. Shli, shi is masculine. So the third horse would be sus, shli, shi. Third horse. Third man, ish, shli, shi. Okay. Uh, fourth undergoes a special change when it's put into the ordinal form. The beginning aleph disappears. But the same thing happens to the end. The last letter is displaced by a yod. And another yod comes on the end. So this becomes revi. Fourth. Okay, so the fourth man, Ish Revi'i. Fourth horse, Sus Revi'i. Fourth woman, Isha Revi'it. Okay. Chamesh becomes Chamesh. 
חמישי. Minor vowel change there. Chamishi is fifth. All right. Sixth. Instead of adding a yod, sixth just puts a dagish in the second sheen. Shishi. Sixth. All right. Shvi'i for seventh, and so on. Okay. So Rishon, Sheni, Shlishi, Revi'i, Chamishi, Shishi, Shvi'i, Shemini, Tashi'i, uh, that one's hard to say, and Asiri. Okay, that's first through tenth. Now, um, one special note. Okay, so uh, special note I'll say for uh, in just a minute. So cardinal numbers represent a quantity, right? And we've gone through one through ten. Again, one and two match gender. Three and up, reverse gender. Okay, and you can use them as adjectives or in the construct state. Ordinal numbers rep do not represent quantity but represent a position. And they function as regular adjectives, always following the noun they modify, and always matching in gender. Uh, there's another, it's really the same use of ordinal numbers, but there's another sense in which they can be understood. A lot of times, if we want to say, to uh, mention a fraction, so let's say a tenth. We can say a siri. If we wish to say um, wish to say a, a tenth of a, um, it's a good example. Well. Okay, a tenth of an omar or some unit of measurement. What we'll do is we will use an ordinal number to designate that. We'll use the feminine form of an ordinal number. Okay, so asirit. And it's not really a different use of an ordinal number. Because we're counting every tenth one. So, you know, if you're going to give, oh, say a tithe, all right, so a tenth of your sheep, well, you don't, uh, you don't take the exact number of sheep you have and divide them into exactly tenths. Okay, if you have 77 sheep, you don't give seven and seven tenths sheep as your tithe. You give seven. You give every tenth one. Because to count your sheep, you would, have, you would funnel them into a small area where they can only go by one at a time, and you count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so every tenth or every sixth or every third, whatever the case may be, is what you're counting. So it doesn't really mean the exact, in some cases it does mean the exact fraction, but the idea is, um, is the same as the normal ordinal number. You're counting, you know, every third one. All right, so the sense is the same, it's just, um, you can use it for other uh, units uh, of measurement. So if you're saying, you know, a third of a, of, a, of a hin, say, or a fourth of a hin, rather, of, of wine, um, <clears throat> you know, that's a, a unit of measure of liquid, so you are measuring exactly one-fourth of a measurement. Okay, but when you're, using it, um, when you're using ordinal numbers in that sense, always put them in the feminine, or you'll always see them in the feminine to denote that uh, they're fractional usage. But as I said, it doesn't always denote an exact fraction. Okay, in the case of some things that can't be divided so easily, it means every tenth or every third or so on. Um, you know, you can't, you can't give seven tenths of your sheep. Uh, not, uh, not if it's to remain alive anyway. So that is the other use of ordinal numbers. 
Okay, so um, these ordinals, by the way, you'll find in Genesis chapter 1, which is where we'll be going in two weeks' time, uh, two lessons' time, because these are all used in describing the days of creation. And um, so, anyway, look forward to that, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week for the next lesson of Advanced Hebrew before we get into translation. So that's an exciting thing. Looking forward to it. We'll see you then. Shalom.